at the risk of evoking a previously preached deadly sin, envy, in three weeks my wife and I will be in Italy for our 25th wedding anniversary. Yeah, come on, eh? And for the past year, we have been dreaming and dreaming, because this is once in a lifetime for us, dreaming about what this trip is going to be and how to do it right and to make the most of our time there. And one of the guiding principles that has come up again and again and again as we think about this three-week journey is that we want to leave room, and I keep telling people this, I want to leave room for boredom when we're there. So we've scheduled five days in the first place, three days in the second, it's a little short, but then five in the third, which is a real small place, which not that much to see compared to the first two places, and then four in the last place. In order, or so that, we don't get to see or have to see everything. order that we might be able to see some things twice if we wanted to go back the next day, or just sit around and waste our time. Yeah, I feel the same way. Waste your time in Italy? What are you, (laughs) crazy? (laughs) This is once in a lifetime. You know, I've talked to people who in four days have gone to all the places we've gone and more and taken in as much of the country as they could. And let me tell you, the type A part of me looks at myself sometimes a bit askance. What kind of a crazy plan is that? I want to get bored in some places because I don't want to miss Italy. Bored in the best sense of the word. Not the, I'm bored, I hate my job, I don't even want to go there tomorrow. Not in the bored, I am so restless and discontent in this relationship with this person now, I just got to get out of here. Not bored in a, there's got to be more than this life has to offer, more meaning, more truth, more beauty. It has to be better than this kind of bored. I want to get bored in the, there's so much time around me right now, It's almost as though it's standing still. And it's so full and so amazing and so pregnantly alive. Bored. Restless boredom, the uncomfortable kind of boredom, is what sloth, another word that's used in the Christian tradition is acedia, It's what sloth or acedia is like. The definition of sloth. Sloth is a sad, restless, and ungrateful boredom in the face of spiritual good. It is spiritual joylessness, carelessness, jadedness, thanklessness, unfruitfulness, lovelessness, and hopelessness. It's just blah, in the face of what should be amazing and beautiful and overwhelming and powerful. Restless boredom is blind to the goodness of life, to the gift of your life, to the potential of your life. It's empty. It's gray. It's slow and listless. It's alone. This week I read a book written by a poet named Kathleen Norris, and the book's called Acedia and Me. And in the book, in a couple different parts, she talked about the relationship between boredom and the deadly sin of sloth. And when I read what she had to say, I went, yeah, that's what I mean when I say I want to be bored in Italy. She quotes one writer who says that boredom represents pure, undiluted time in all of its repetitive, redundant, monotonous splendor. And later she writes, can't we all just call it a day and give over our anxious and ironic selves, give our over-anxious and ironic selves a rest? 
might we not consider boredom as not only necessary for our life, but also as one of its greatest blessings? And then this key turn, a gift, pure and simple, a precious chance to be alone with our thoughts and alone with God. And I think, I know there are going to be crowds of people there on that road where the apostle St. Paul walked in Rome but I think I, w- I want to be alone with you, God, there. If I've got to stand there for 20 minutes, half an hour, whatever, I just want to meet you in that place. I want to sit with you on the edge of the Mediterranean and contemplate you, the maker of all seas and the animals and beasts and creatures that frolic therein. I want to feel your hand, God, when I'm holding my wife's hand, sitting on a bench somewhere in some small town in the middle of wherever, watching people for two hours and getting lost in the Italianness of it all. And I want to drink you in many times, Lord, as we have a Chianti or a, an amazing meal sitting on a patio in Tuscany. I want to savor you, taste you, Take it in for all of its fullness. I don't want to miss a thing. I want time to stop so that first I'll recognize what's really there, and then I'll recognize how it's welling up as it grows, and then feel what it feels like to have the moment overwhelm us. Every place is pregnant with that potential. Every part of your life, even the most painful, lost, difficult, hurt, filled places, have much more that kind of potential to know and experience. You are warm like the sunshine, bright summer day. You are clear as the blue sky, without the road away. You are gentle as the evening breeze, blows against my face. And I love to be with you, beautiful God. I love to be with you, beautiful God.